Now today we are going to be talking about one of the most common lab tests that you will come across as a healthcare student and certainly as a practicing doctor or clinician. And the reason I want to make a series of videos on this is it's not always going to be massively important to understand the ins and outs of each particular element of these lab tests, but I think particularly for medical students and doctors, it's helpful to understand the what and the why. What is the value actually measuring and what does it mean? And today we're gonna to be talking about the full blood count, the FBC, or sometimes in the US referred to as the complete blood count or CBC. Now let's start with the bottle. If we were to request a full blood count or a complete blood count, in the UK, most commonly, we will look for a purple or a lavender topped bottle. Most haematological investigations come from here, including FBC, HbA1c, ESR, and of course, a blood film. And the first really important thing to understand is the additive, which in these tubes is EDTA, or ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. You'll have heard before that this is a chelator. It binds to metal ions, crucially calcium in this case, which halts the clotting process. And now that we understand the tube itself, we can have a think about some of the results that our colleagues in the labs will send to us. And broadly speaking, we can divide this into three domains. We have red blood cells or erythrocytes sites white blood cells or leukocytes and platelets starting with red cells we get the hemoglobin this is the concentration of the hemoglobin molecule in the blood and i'll make sure that reference ranges for all of these tests will be on screen be careful with the units as different trusts and health systems will use slightly different ranges and units in the uk we most commonly measure hemoglobin in grams per liter a low hb you'll no doubt have heard of referred to as anemia and a raised hb is called polycythemia or erythrocytosis and if this value is out of range we can then look at the other parts of the full blood count to work out the underlying cause. Next up is hematocrit or packed cell volume. This is the percentage of the blood sample that is made up of red blood cells. This is measured by centrifuging the sample and then measuring the length of the packed red cells against a known volume. Red cell count is quite simple and exactly what it sounds like. It is the number of red cells per unit volume measured in cells per litre. The reticulocyte count is quite similar, but it's specifically the number of immature red cells produced in bone marrow and maturing into full adult red blood cells after approximately two days. There are then three values that come together in a group collectively referred to as the red blood cell indices. These are specific mathematical measurements about the size and haemoglobin content of the red cells themselves. The first is mean corpuscular volume, which is the average volume of a corpuscle or a red blood cell, mean corpuscular haemoglobin, again the amount of haemoglobin per red blood cell on average, and mean corpuscular haemoglobin concentration, which is the average concentration of haemoglobin per unit volume. And we use these values to help classify anemias and work out where the problem has ultimately arisen. So stop here, take a break, that's a lot of words to take in all at once. That is everything to do with red blood cells, so we'll put that behind us. And next, we need to think about white blood cells. We start by getting the raw white cell count, just like we did with red cells. An elevated white cell count or leukocytosis might be suggestive of infection, while a reduced white cell count or a leukopenia might put someone at risk of infection. A very, very risky and dangerous state to be in is so-called neutropenic sepsis, where you are experiencing a very severe infection but crucially, they cannot raise the army of white blood cells that you would normally need to fight off that infection. You're going to be much more dependent on medical intervention. The other important information we get here is the breakdown of white cell types, given that white blood cells is quite a broad umbrella term, and there are many types with many specific functions, and the different types can often be affected by drugs we give to patients. The most commonly measured types here are neutrophils, lymphocytes, monocytes, eosinophils, and basophils, and I'll put up a brief description for each cell type, their main roles and functions on screen now, so you can revisit these main cell types in your own time. And the last data set we usually receive from the full blood count is about platelets. Platelets are essentially little chunks of cytoplasm that are derived from megakaryocytes in the lungs and bone marrow, which react to bleeding and help us form clots. We usually start with the platelet count, which is the number of platelets circulating in the blood, with low counts suggesting a low clotting ability or an increased count suggesting that clots are being actively formed at the time the blood sample was taken. 
We then have mean platelet volume, which is a measurement of the size of the platelets, and lastly, the platelet distribution width, which is an indication of the variation in size of those platelets. And that's it. There you go. That is a quick, concise summary of everything that is contained in the full blood count or the complete blood count, depending on your vernacular. I hope you found it useful. You will find the full article that accompanies this video, which I'll keep up to date if I need to make any changes on my website, ollieburton.com. It'll be linked down in the description. Good luck in your practice. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this and leave me down in the comments suggestions of anything else you'd like to see covered. Take care and I'll see you next time.